without further ado, let's discuss everyone's favorite topic, LeBron James. Now, I also want to apologize in advance. The internet has been acting really, really bad um, where I'm at. So if the image doesn't really pop up on the display, for those of you guys on the video side, I apologize for that, but I can't really control that. This isn't my house. This isn't my Wi-Fi, so oops if that does happen. But anyways, LeBron, and well, Team USA, I should say, had a vote, and... The vote was who was the best player on the roster. And LeBron James accumulated five of the players voting for him and therefore is the favorite for being the best player on Team USA. This is not a fan poll. This is not an NBA analyst poll. This is a poll done by the players. Now, not entirely sure if like the rules of this poll said that they were allowed to pick themselves because I have, you know, full confidence that Anthony Edwards either picked himself and if he didn't pick himself, then he picked Kevin Durant because obviously Kevin Durant is his favorite player in the entire NBA. But this just shows like the amount of respect and the amount of sort of gratitude that a lot of these players give towards LeBron and what he's done for the game. Again, I have no idea if any of the players voted for themselves. I have no idea if they could do that. But if they did, if they were able to do that, I would imagine that every player, at least on that roster, would have the confidence to vote for themselves. But let me know in the comments, do you think there's a player on that roster that wouldn't vote for themselves if they had the option to? Or do you think this was literally like you were not allowed to pick yourself, someone other than yourself. Because as a basketball player, well, I'm obviously obviously not a basketball player, but like, you know, as if I was a basketball player, I would find that there is nothing wrong with picking yourself as being the best player on the team. Like that's, that's confidence. Like it's not really arrogance, right? I don't think that's, there is a fine line between arrogance and confidence, as I said in the previous podcast, but I don't think that's being arrogant. I think that's showing confidence. Like you believe that you are the best player on your team, like as you should, you should believe that every single time you step out on the court. Like for instance, Charles Barkley, when he was playing in the finals, he, well, not even when he was playing in the finals. Throughout his entire career, Charles Barkley would feel like he is the best player on the floor every single night. And the only instance where he didn't was when Michael Jordan outplayed him in the finals, I believe in game two, because he felt that he played about as good as he could ever play, and Michael Jordan just outplayed him. And he said in the Last Dance documentary, that was the first time in my life I felt that there was a better basketball player in the world than me. And, you know, coming from someone like Chuck, who has all that confidence, that's really, that's obviously, you know, a staggering feat. But, again, being the oldest player on the roster and still being the best player, like, you know, still considered amongst your peers as the best player to ever play well not to ever play but the best player on the roster that is nothing short of amazing and this is obviously with all of them practicing with each other and in practice they've seen just how great lebron really is and i honestly i couldn't agree more with lebron being the best player on the roster like it's really a no-brainer in my opinion obviously you know Joel Embiid was a close second. A lot of people considered Embiid as one of the top players on the team. Some players voted for him as being the best player on the team, especially considering how he recently won the MVP. But aside from that, I believe that LeBron James is without a doubt the best player on the roster. I mean, he has the most experience and he has the most all-around game amongst everybody on that Team USA roster. Granted, Everybody on that roster, you know, they can really do everything on the court if we really think about it. I mean, aside from maybe Curry and his defense, but at the same time, Curry can still get steals. And speaking of the rest of the roster, there is also an update on how, you know, the rotations are going to go with Team USA. Obviously, LeBron is expected to start. Like, I mean, 
that is a no-brainer to me. I feel like LeBron should be in the starting lineup. And I did say that he was going to play point guard, right? You mentioned that I mentioned that in the previous podcast that I wanted him to play point guard and have Steph Curry be off the ball. That is exactly what Team USA is planning to do. Now, LeBron's not going to run point guard. He's more he's probably going to be, you know, in that point forward position. That's what they that's what they said in um in the article that I looked at. Excuse me, that was the mic moving. I apologize for that. But they said that LeBron was going to run point forward, having Steph Curry sort of move off the ball. And I think that is obviously genius because, you know, I said it first. But aside from that, I think that's the great move. I mean, Steve Kerr is one of the coaches for Team USA, and he arguably is one of the he most definitely is like has the most experience coaching with Steph Curry and he can draw plays and scenarios that will give Curry the best look at shooting a three-point shot because he has to sort of write he has to sort of draw the plays of where Klay Thompson is supposed to run where Steph Curry is supposed to run off the ball and with LeBron James being one of the best players ever his playmaking is on par with his scoring and LeBron James is easily going to see where Steph Curry is when he's moving off the ball. And I genuinely feel like that is going to be the most effective way to use Steph Curry. Obviously, we know Steph Curry can handle the ball, but in an offense where he doesn't have to, I think that's really an offense where he thrives in, which is which was one of the reasons that made to 2018, 2017 Golden State Warriors so deadly was the fact that you had Steph Curry, a ball-dominant player, but he was playing mostly off the ball, off of catch-and-shoots. I mean, you know, he would obviously have the ball most of the, um, sometimes, but trying to share it amongst Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson is a task in of itself. So they would draw up plays that would allow Steph Curry to run off the ball, Klay Thompson to run off the ball, and thus would give them an open shot. And this is sort of like a similar strategy that Team USA is using, and I couldn't agree more with the strategy. So if we're going to go by LeBron being a point forward, you know, in air quotes, as they would like to call it, I believe it's mainly for the defense because having Steph Curry guard the shooting guard is probably not going to be the best option defensively as opposed to having somebody like Kawhi, who's most likely going to be the starting shooting guard, play defense on the shooting guard. So it would be Steph Curry at the one, guarding the one, Kawhi Leonard at the two, guarding the two, and then LeBron at the small forward or the power forward, depends on how they go, guarding the small or the power forward. Because let's face it, LeBron can play every single position. And that is probably one of the reasons why he was voted as the best player on Team USA. Just his versatility and the ability that he has to be able to mesh well in any single offensive system that you can put him in. You could put him at the five and everything would be great. You could put him at the four and everything would be great. The three, especially. The shooting guard, not so much. Honestly, I feel like if there was any position that I would not put LeBron in, it would be the shooting guard. And then directly after that would be the center. I wouldn't really I'd put LeBron at center over I'd put him at shooting guard because I just don't feel like if he's going to be a guard, you might as well just make him the point guard because his vision is just that much better than everybody else on the court. Granted, Tyrese Halliburton has great vision as well, but LeBron, he just has the brain. He has the IQ, the experience, and when you, experience is one of the most important things that any player can have because you have, like, multiple experiences on several different defenses, multiple experiences on how defenses are going to react to whether you do this on offense, whether you do this on offense, whether you do this on offense. And really it just makes, he's just obviously like one of the more versatile players. And as you guys can tell, I agree with LeBron being the best player on Team USA. I don't think there's anyone else that's close to him. I mean, the only other player I think that would be close to LeBron in terms of skill and, you know, on the basketball court, it would have to be, um, that's a really tough one now that I think about it. I don't want to say Kevin Durant. I'd say Kevin Durant is like four or three. And, but at the same time, I don't really want to say Steph Curry 
because Steph Curry doesn't really have the defense. So I might go with Kawhi Leonard. I know Kawhi Leonard's been injured a lot of the times, but I really think Kawhi is the second best player on Team USA. And then we can put Joel Embiid over at... Honestly, you know what? I don't even want to put Joel Embiid in any of those like behind Kawhi Leonard or like in the top five, to be honest, because it's just his play style. Like Joel's play style is just, it's not my cup of tea. I don't like it when players try to draw fouls. I don't really like it when that's sort of their objective as opposed to scoring, which should be everyone's main objective, especially when you're entering into the Olympics, because you're most likely not going to get that superstar treatment that you do in the NBA. Like, um, that thing exists. Superstar treatment definitely exists. And it's one of those things that caused Team USA to struggle a little bit back in 2004. The fact that they weren't really accustomed to the rules and the fact that they weren't really used to how the refs handled the game. So, and on top of that, I saw Joel Embiid foul baiting in practice. I'm sorry. I cannot go, I cannot stand behind that. If you're foul baiting in practice, you're going to do that in the game. And chances are the refs aren't going to give him that call. Like, you need to go for a bucket. That the plain and simple. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you guys think Joel Embiid should be in the top five as one of the as one of the best players on the team? Like, you know, top five best player on the team. Because when you think about it, he is the only player on that team that has not made a conference finals. The only player that hasn't made a conference finals. But I digress. So with that, we are out of time for the first segment. So now I will go ahead and go into the second segment where I talk about Cade Cunningham and his new extension with the Detroit Pistons. I mean, he signed an extension a while ago, but I'm just going to break it down a little bit because the report recently came up. So, or he was in talks of signing his extension. Now he officially signed his extension. That's what I shouldn't say. I apologize for that because now I, I forget that there's this new rule in the in the NBA where like now teams can talk to their players before other teams can talk to their players and negotiate contracts. So I'll be right back after this short break. Be sure to stay tuned. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign. A sign. I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows where a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose if it's some loose shit. A stupid myth, you choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world 